This is a conversation with Dr. James Miller of the University of Rhode Island brought to you by the URI Graduate School of Oceanography Coastal Resources Center in Rhode Island Sea Grant. Can you start by explaining how sound affects marine mammals and fish? Marine mammals and fish uh, use sound in the ocean to navigate, to find prey, to avoid being eaten by predators. So sound is, is, is as important for them as it is for terrestrial animals and humans. Being able to hear your environment is an evolutionary advantage. So sound generally is extremely important, especially, in fact, you could even argue it's even more important for aquatic animals because uh, you, you can't see as far in the ocean. You might see 20 meters or 50 feet or something like that. But in the ocean, you're, you know, the oceans are big. So you use sound to, to reach out and listen or to find. Uh, and depending on what, upon which animals you're talking about, you could be uh, calling, you know, hundreds of kilometers. How do the natural sounds of the ocean compare to those created by offshore wind? For offshore wind, uh, construction is very loud. Impact pile driving is typically used to, to drive uh, these structures into the seabed. It's like just taking a hammer and smacking a pipe down into the ground. And that sound can, can travel um, many, many, many kilometers, tens or hundreds of kilometers in the ocean. Offshore wind farm construction is loud, but it's, it's finite and it's easily calculated. What's harder is um, the noise from operations, uh, because that is uh, uh, ongoing and lasts, if, if, a, if a turbine, wind turbine is put in the ocean for 20 years, that's going to generate sound for 20 years. So the question is, is what are the long-term effects? How are the effects of acoustics measured at the Block Island Wind Farm? Is this the same process that is used at the offshore wind farms in Europe? Well, Europeans have a lot of experience on, on measuring uh, sound from construction and operation of wind farms, and we've read their papers and we learned a lot from them. And so we're, we're late to the game uh, in this country, but we put uh, hydrophones in the water and geophones that measure the, the shaking of the seabed. We put those nearby the, the wind farm. So we've done that in the, in the Block Island wind farm. We're about to do it in the Virginia, um, Coastal Virginia Offshore Wind Project, CVOW, that's uh, about to go in the water in the next couple of months. So we're, we're, we're deploying equipment. They're basically, Underwater microphones, we have uh, computers that, you know, record the data like your iPhone. It's a, it's a standard piece of acoustic engineering. We've, we've been doing it for many, many years for other purposes and in this country since, since uh, the Block Island Wind Farm in, in 2015. What sounds are associated with the construction and operation of offshore wind farms and how far do these sounds travel? The construction as a the construction noise, which is from the uh, impact pile driving, can travel and be detectable at a easily 100 kilometers away, so 50, 60 miles away from the site. And uh, it's, it's loud and, and it, it booms through the water. The noise from operations of the wind farm, you have to get very close to hear it. The measurements we were taking were uh, just 50 meters away from the, from the wind turbine. So it was very close. We had to get very close and set the gains very high to be able to pick up the, the noise from operations. So it just it's, it's just amazing the, the differences in levels between the construction and the operation. Are there certain species at major risk from the effects of pile driving? Well, the... the the, the, the species everyone's worried about are northern right whales. Northern right whales, there's only three or 400 of them left in the world. And so the construction uh, is scheduled around them and their, and their right whales migration. Uh, so for instance, the construction can, uh, can only happen if you're gonna do it here in, in Rhode Island. It was only allowed between oh, April 1st and October 31st, 
and it was only allowed during the day. Uh, so, and that was to make sure that if people, if there was a whale, right whale, or any kind of other whale nearby, then you could see it and stop construction. And it, and that did happen actually. Some whale came by and they had to stop. So, the reason is is that the whales in the winter are are are, are migrating down by, and we we want to make sure that um, we stay away from those migration times. What would you recommend for monitoring the effects of offshore wind acoustics on marine mammals and fish moving forward? Like we said earlier, long-term measurements are important. Um, observations of whales, there's a lot of new technology coming to monitor whales uh, passively to just listen to, to, to the whale calls and track them. Um, here at URI and, and other institutions, we're, we're working on, on techniques to do that so that we could monitor any, any long-term effects. And lastly, can you give us an idea of what's next for you and your research? Uh, we're going to Virginia. Uh, there's uh, two wind turbines being constructed there. We're, we're uh, just in the midst of planning to start shipping equipment down there. It was, it's been delayed by the uh, COVID virus, but uh, it looks like it's going to happen in early June, and we'll have uh, data there, uh, hopefully good data, and we'll be looking at that. Um, generally, people are, are interested in, in anthropogenic noise and marine mammals, so we, we are always interested in um, taking data and, and working with uh, marine biologists who know the whales well. I'm an acoustician, so I measure sound and um, but tying those tying those together, uh, the uh, University of Rhode Island operates the Discovery of Sound in the Sea website, dositz.org, D-O-S-I-T-S dot O-R-G. That is a uh, fifteen year uh, long effort to put uh, the impact of sound on marine mammals into uh, a form that can be understood by lawyers or or students that are interested in more information. So I, I would, uh, and we have sections on the impact of, of wind farm construction and also sonars and ship noise uh, and other, other uh, anthropogenic or man-made sources of sound. So I'd encourage people to go to that site and, um, or contact me if you have any questions.